What is up YouTube and welcome to this Lovecraft Country episode 4 breakdown. This dropped very early on HBO Max but I've only just been able today to watch it and make an entire video on it and the show continues to not disappoint and is easily filling the void that Westworld and Watchmen has left in HBO's schedule. After last week's Hill House style episode we are straight into an uncharted style episode here which gives us an insight into just what the Uncharted games could look like if they were shown on TV. And Atticus and Co need to get the lost pages from the Book of Names that was actually mentioned last week. We start with Atticus's dad back at the bottle and haunted by the demons in the said bottle, overhearing a TV program about the conflict between the Russians and the Americans, with the Americans portraying the Soviets as savages and barbarians, which is what we had with Titus Braithwaite introducing his perceived civility to the Native Americans, which was mentioned by one of the museum employees when she mentions that she, or at least Titus, worked with the savages here. And that does play out quite a lot and is a theme of the overarching show. He also reads and studies the Book of the Ancient Dawn, which of course has all of the secrets they need to and learn the spells that are needed to stop the determined Christina Braithwaite as the book that was found by George and given to Atticus's father to help Atticus and the crew in a fit of rage, he actually burns it inside his flat. Now, I think that based on the end of the episode, he actually saw something inside this book, which he felt was absolutely disgusting or just downright dangerous, which has led him to some sort of madness and he was never stable to begin with. Now, Christina turns up at Letty's house and is actually unable to get in due to the spells put on the house. Considering this is a Winthrop house and he was unceremoniously booted from the lodge and the wider order, it's no surprise that there were magical defences put on this house akin to Hogwarts. Sorry, I have been watching the Harry Potter movies again as summer turns into spooky season, the absolute best season. Now, Braithwaite is actually looking for an orrery, and that is the same orrery that we saw last episode, and this was the one that Hippolyta was ushered towards in the house, which I still am clinging on to the idea that George did this from beyond the grave. Miss Braithwaite is out of luck as Hippolyta has it at George's shop and she's trying to work out just which solar system this is actually from and if it is real as it seems to have two suns but sadly it is actually broken. After her encounter with the witch, uh, Letty actually heads to a library to find Atticus as she now knows that he wanted to kill Christina at the end of last episode, but did not tell anyone else about this. Of course, his father has been investigating the ongoings and it, or at least been doing it a lot longer than Atticus has and he's checked out every single book that Atticus actually wants. Atticus wants to research and find the missing pages of the Book of Names so that he can actually try and get some spells to try and protect himself, his family and Letty. But it's clear that Christina is pulling the strings as she used him to get closer to the Ori and using all of this and engineering these goings on to find the pages for herself. She does have a chip on her shoulder somewhat. As a woman, she can't actually join the Order at all. I love the foreshadowing in this episode as the kid who keeps shushing them is reading Journey to the Center of the Earth, which is similar to the latter half of the episode where they go deep down into the caverns and the book is even name checked by one of them. They decide to go to Montrose and are actually able to get a nugget from him that there are 34 lodges in the United States and later in the episode it becomes clear that all the lodges do not seem eye to eye and perhaps there will be some sort of lodge civil war. And he mentions that he burnt the book because it's too dangerous and it's clear he has learnt something deep within those pages. Now Braithwaite weirdly plays hide and seek in a very cool moment. We actually see the cops who come to get her were the same cops as the racist ones from last episode. So this is actually the Lodge of Chicago and it seems to be actually exclusively cops, probably. She goes to the Captain Lancaster who is running the Lodge in Chicago. This is the same man who was actually interrogating Letty last episode, but things get even weirder as we learn that the Orrery is a key to operating Titus Braithwaite's time machine as this continues to surprise. So I do think we're gonna lean more into Lovecraft territory, and I think dimensions may come into play later on, as Lovecraft monsters do seem to come from other dimensions with gods and elder gods and the like. 
She has some conflict with the officer and the lodge leader as they posture, and he says she would know her, or at least should know her place as she's a woman, and she isn't even in the order. But it's clear she taunts him as he seems to be a blue collar character who has somehow forced his way into the order in a new money type of way. Even as a woman of birthright, a man with new money is more respected, it seems. The team go off to Boston to find the pages in a museum, which has a vault beneath it. Now, while this happens, we have a subplot of Letty's sister going to a department store, something Letty wanted her to work in, but she finds another black girl working there, indicating there's just not enough space for her. She speaks to the boyfriend of Christina, who is clearly using her to get in the house, find the orrery, or try and use her. And in the book, she actually did have a potion which turned her white. And this seems to be where they're going with this, especially with the promo for next week. And that's going to be a curious one there, as it will sow discord between the group. In a weird moment, the tag-along guy named Tree, as because, well, yes, he isn't subtle as to why he's called Tree, alludes to the idea that Atticus's father is gay and has been getting close to the guy in the alley who was getting, mm, shall we say, serviced, as we saw in the first episode. Maybe this is why Atticus's mother actually hooked up with George, and maybe Montrose was urged to be the father or pretend that he's the father because George was presumably with Hippolyta at the time. There wasn't an affair, and that's why he also saw Atticus's mother when he had the dream sequence. It's nothing It's nothing I expected, but it did come out of the blue. After this, they go to the museum at night and are able to get into the secret chamber of secrets. Sorry, uh, Harry Potter on the brain there. They find it under the statue of Titus, and they find a specific date that combined with a specific expedition on the map, and that is the arch where they go to. Funny enough, this did remind me of that time in The Simpsons when Bart says he will never need Roman numerals, and then he did actually need that. But I'm weird, and I make cultural references that are inappropriate all the time, so yeah, let's move on. They head over a massive chasm and have to get to a vault door and they match up the monsters to the book on the door with the book of the ancient dawn that was burnt. Yeah. Anyway, they go into the next room and we get more insight into Atticus's past as he is accused of leaving a man behind as Montrose presses him, but Atticus says he never left a man behind at all. And we're trying to learn here what the true trauma was and I expect that to come out in a horrible way. These tunnels are similar to the one we saw at the end of last episode, where the bodies of the racists ended up. But this seems to hint that the lodge is connected, and weirdly, Chicago and Boston are very far apart. But the elevator that was in the house is actually here, and the bodies have ended up here as well. Atticus opens a door which only his blood can actually open, and they find the pages, but there are natives around here which imply that... Yes, this wasn't a very nice expedition at all. Now, this woman is actually from a tribe uh, from South America, and she actually has male and female genitalia as well, and speaks the native tongue. Now, she was taken on a ship by Titus, and again, he shows his love to slaves, which is very curious. And maybe this is why the ancestor of Atticus left, because she knew what was going to happen. But weirdly, Atticus can actually understand it. Now, Yehima can actually understand the Book of Names, but she is cursed in a cruel way and cannot speak of this. She just screams when this happens. She's turned into a siren, something Titus did in an act of cruelty. And it is likely her reanimation is something to do with the Book of Names, as she can actually understand this and seems to have some good knowledge of it. But they get back to Chicago in the elevator that we saw last week. And interestingly, Hippolyta finally learns what they were doing in the first episode and goes to investigate as time and space and distances just aren't what they should be. Atticus tells Montrose that Yohima can actually break the spell, but they have the pages and they can try and stop this curse that is on her. But Montrose slits her throat. Now, part of me was confused with this. At the start of the episode, it seemed like Montrose, or they were hinting towards the idea that Montrose was indeed not himself and possessed. But he is trying to stop Atticus from finding out what happened in the past, or even to stop further discoveries. So it's clear he knows something that is coming, and he knows that he needs to stop whatever 
is going to occur. So there is that idea that he could be possessed. Now in the book, they actually go to the Winthrop's descendants to try and stop things. So we'll can see a continuation of that next. And Letty's sister will be absolutely manipulated for her own gain. So we're going to see more discord between those there. But it was an absolute joy to watch. And I've loved every single episode thus far with the merging of mysteries and horror tropes, which works very well. But that is it for this video. Please drop a like down below. Please do subscribe with notifications on if you want more. And I'll see you soon. And goodbye.